So now I turned this, or no, I didn't turn it into tightness test. Okay, so now he corrected the leak under the dash by tightening the expansion valve, the old brass style expansion valve with the copper gasket. And what you're supposed to do now, I'm not gonna do it because I need to move on and I'm spending too much time on this car. Plus I'm making too many videos that's biting into the productivity of my day. You see that flickering and just went down from seven to six? That's tenths of a PSI. That's not a PSI, that's tenths. You see the little dot right there? With digital gauges that are much more accurate and sensitive to analog gauges, you can measure leaks over a period of 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You could see tenths of a PSI drop. You can never see this with an analog gauge. So say in 15 minutes, it drops eight tenths of a PSI but you were on a pair of analog gauges and you were up there at 200 PSI. Well, analog gauges are only accurate within two to 4% depending on the manufacturer. And that was when they were brand new. And that is only on the center of their scale. So if there's zero to 600, it's only 2% accurate within a, a certain center. I can't remember the exact number, but it's only accurate in the center of the zero and 600 up in that percent and as you get farther away from each side from the zero point from the in between 50 percent mark your percentage of inaccuracy goes up so if you waited and this kept on going down an analog ne needle would not move perceivable to a human eye but you would know you'd have a leak or is it the gas was hot sitting in my car or on top of my car, wherever I have it stored or outside, and the gas bottle is 115 degrees, the car is inside or was inside the shop, and the car, all this metal is like 60 degrees from sitting overnight, and I put a 200 degree gas, pump it inside into a 60 degree car, and the gas is gonna start changing temperature and start cooling, and you'll start noticing the PSI go down. Now let's say we, we do this right now and it's 70 degrees. No, it's 72 degrees. I'm off by two degrees. I got to recalibrate. Um, so we do this at 70 degrees. We have 210 PSI. Let's say it's equal. We put this in the shop overnight and it gets down to 40 degrees tonight. It might drop one and a half PSI, two PSI, not because of a leak, because of the temperature, the gas shrank. Then tomorrow morning, you put the car back outside, the temperature raises back to 72 PSI or 70 degrees, exact same of where you started, and the gas pressure will go back up to the 210 PSI right where you started. And if later in the day it gets to be 110 degrees, your gas pressure will increase. You'll actually gain gas pressure a little bit. And it'll stay there. And then at night, it'll do this. And if you ever put this on a system for like three or four days in a row, every day and every morning and every night when you go to check it at different temperatures you'll see the gas go over the point where you initially started and then the next morning you come back it's under the point and when i do large systems that have a thousand to three thousand feet of copper piping i might notice 15 degrees of change in pressure in the morning it'll go way down and by four o'clock in the afternoon when it's really hot, it'll be back where I had it, unless I did it at a lower temperature and it'll be over. And, and every day I can monitor this and without losing any gas pressure, it'll go up and down, up and down every day. And it'll always come right back where I filled it when it's exactly at the same temperature when I filled it. All right, guys, I'm gonna call this good to go because what I was supposed to do is wait all this time in more like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you let the system stabilize and then what you come over here, you hit the tightness test. You see that happen? Now it has a counter and it's gonna display how many tenths of a PSI you lose over here. It says press enter to start test, press enter. Now my loss of gas pressure will show up here, 0.0. .0. And my seconds and minutes counter will start over here to let you know how long. And when, you're, when you pass the test, you hit this and you print it out or take a snapshot of it and then put it in your file and your employees, if you're the manager or the owner of the shop, your employees are to prove in the file, because most everybody's digital nowadays, 
uh, that this vehicle has passed a standing uh, high pressure decay test. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> now it jumps 4.4, 4, 0.3. It's going up and down, went down, then up. All right, I'll see you guys later. And it still hasn't been 10 or 15 minutes of stabilization.